Hi, my name is Galvin Kennedy, and I represent hundreds of nurses around the state of Texas who claim they should be paid for their meal periods because they're not really relieved of their duties on the meal periods. One question that often comes up in these cases is, is there a difference between a completely skipped lunch period versus a interrupted lunch period? So let's take those in two parts. First of all, if you as a nurse completely skip your lunch period, don't take it at all, don't even have a sandwich or a taco or whatever you're eating, then of course the employer is required to pay you for that time because you didn't get any meal break, right? So that's an easy answer. Now what happens in the situation where you have an interruption? Well, the law is a little vague there. If the interruption it lasts a minute or less, it's more likely that that meal period is not compensable. However, the more interruptions that take place during your meal period and the longer the interruptions, the more likely that meal period really tends to benefit the employer and therefore it becomes compensable. Now, another issue that comes up is if there are no interruptions, can that meal period still be compensable under the law? And the answer is it really depends. The law that applies to nurses in the state of Texas and uh, the, the federal law in general for Texas is that the more interruptions that take place, the more likely it is that that nurse has not been relieved of duties. And therefore, that, that period that is supposed to be for a meal is really benefiting the employer. Take, for example, you have a nurse who's working at a hospital, say, four shifts in a particular week. If on shifts one and, and shifts two, Monday and Tuesday, they end up getting interrupted three, four, five times per shift, but then on the third shift that week, they have zero interruptions, the fact that they weren't interrupted that particular day doesn't mean that they were completely relieved of their duties. On that third day, they still could have been interrupted. They're still subject to being interrupted, and that's because they're responsible for the health and safety of the patients. And therefore, there's a good argument that that period also is compensable under the law. In general, though, we look at the total number of interruptions and the length of the interruptions and whether the person remains responsible for the health and safety of the patient. The more the interruptions, the more likely it is that that period is compensable under the federal law.